Welcome to Now in Android, your ongoing guide to what's new and notable in the world of Android development. Today we'll be covering the cross-device SDK developer preview, Camera X 1.2 beta, the Wear OS material tiles library, the Deep Links monitor and play console, five years of Kotlin on Android, and more. We launched the cross-device SDK for Android developer preview, which allows you to build rich, multi-device experiences, abstracting away the intricacies involved with working with device discovery, authentication, and connection protocols. The initial release contains APIs that allow you to easily find nearby devices, start your app on a secondary device, authorize peer-to-peer -peer communication with encrypted low-latency bidirectional data sharing, and transfer or extend your app's user experience across devices. The current preview supports Android phones and tablets. The cross-device SDK will be available later for other Android services and not Android OSs. Camera X version 1.2 is now in beta. It introduces a zero shutter lag capture mode along with MLKit Analyzer, an implementation of ImageAnalysis.Analyzer that handles much of the MLKit setup for you. MLKit Analyzer works with both camera controller and camera provider workflows and can even handle coordinate transformations between MLKit output and your preview view. Zero shutter lag greatly reduces image capture lag on supported devices by using a circular buffer of captures to get the frame closest to the actual press of the shutter button. Tiles are one of the most used surfaces on Wear OS, providing users glanceable access to the information and actions they need to get things done quickly. We launched the Tiles Material Library, allowing you to use pre-built material components, such as button, chip, compact chip, title chip, circular progress indicator, and text, along with layouts such as primary layout, edge content layout, multi-button layout, and multi-slot layout to create tiles that embrace the latest material design for Wear OS. Together with the Tiles Design Kit, they help you to easily follow the Tiles Design Guidelines. Deep links allow you to get your users directly to in-app content by accepting traffic from external sources, including the web. Since answering basic questions like, is this URL deep linked? Or why is this deep link not working? Can be difficult to answer. Many apps have partial, broken, or no deep links configured. To make it easier for you to keep your deep links in good shape, we've introduced a new dedicated play console page that gives you a quick but comprehensive snapshot of your current setup, along with tooling to help you identify and troubleshoot issues at a glance. Five years ago, Android announced official support for the interoperable, mature, production-ready, and open-source Kotlin programming language. Since then, JetBrains and Google have been collaborating around the development of Kotlin, and the Kotlin Foundation was co-founded by the two companies. JetBrains developing both the language and tooling has given Kotlin outstanding IDE support. We put together some posts and videos to celebrate the journey and elaborate the milestones of Kotlin on Android with many of the people that helped to make it happen. The Mad Skills series on performance continued with a blog post from Ben and a video from Tomash that covers how to use the Macro Benchmark Library along with UI Automator to help generate baseline profiles for you. Now, baseline profiles help your app to start and run faster by optimizing critical code paths ahead of time, allowing for a smoother user experience. For ongoing content, be sure to check the Mad Skills playlist on YouTube, the articles on Medium, or the handy landing page that points to all of it. In the world of Android X, the Wear Compose 1.0.1 release fixed a logic bug in scaling lazy column. As mentioned before, we released Wear Tiles 1.1, a WebKit 1.5 added set algorithmic darkening allowed, and added support for setting and allow list of URLs for the configured proxy. Over in our video content, we covered how TikTok used Android tools to improve app startup and make the user experience more seamless, and how it impacted app usage and Play Store ratings. We also introduced the Google Play Academy course around designing kids' apps and making them fun, usable, and appropriate for their target age group. The course also covers the framework for rating kids' apps on Google Play that teachers across the U.S. use, so you can understand what they're looking for to help your app stand out. In articles, Avish, our summer Android DevRel engineer intern, discussed modern approaches to creating Android media apps, leveraging their experience in converting the Universal Android Media Player or UAP Media Playback sample to Compose, updating it to use modern libraries such as Media3. Terrence covered tips to improve your app's user experience with notifications before targeting Android 13, as well as how to test your app's integration with the permission without flashing different OS versions onto your device. Ben wrote a FAQ on the Jetpack Compose Accompanist, a labs-like environment for new Compose APIs. Accompanist is used to help fill known gaps in the Compose toolkit, experiment with new APIs, and gather insight into the development experience of building a Compose library with the goal of upstreaming libraries into the official toolkit. Current libraries in Accompanist include support for flow layouts, pager, navigation transitions, and swipe refresh. So 
that's it for this time. With the Cross Device SDK Developer Preview, Camera X 1.2 Beta, the release of the Wear OS Material Tiles Library, the new Deep Links Monitor and Play Console, five years of Kotlin on Android, Mad Skills Performance featuring baseline profiles with micro benchmark, Android X updates, and more. Come back here soon for the next update from the Android Developer Universe.